Hey. What's up, Mike? Hey, I apologize, man. <laughs> uh, right on time. Like, uh, you're, you're only, what, almost an hour late? We're cool with that, right? <laughs> yeah, almost. I had you, actually, I had you in my calendar for 10 o'clock, man. I just <laughs> got busy. Uh, actually, I was shipping magazines, you know. I get a bunch to come in during the week. I've just been sitting down here, and, and uh, I happen to come across. I, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. You sound like me in high school right now. Hey, I tell you what, man. It's like ever since this magazine started, it's just like, I mean, it, it's such a huge amount of work. I mean, I, the amount of emails I get, I mean, I don't know what it is about it, but it's just like, you know, I feel like I'm at the bottom of like some well, like looking up, you know, 100 feet in the air going, save me. <laughs> But but it's it, but it's a good well. Like I mean, you'd rather be busy and have oh yeah, to I mean yeah, it's a good problem stuff. to have. But man, I tell you what, I mean, I'm still running this thing out of a garage for God's sake. So I mean, it's yeah, it's a lot of work, and and uh, you know, it's taken off like crazy. We're selling a bunch of issues on Game Gavel, like single premier issues, and we got tons of subscriptions that are selling, and we're working some other things, and and um, you know, we're going to be at Dice next week. And, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So just a lot of shit going on, man. It's, uh, uh, but it's good stuff. It's good stuff. We're excited about it. Nice. Oh, well, well, by the way, Mike Kennedy from Read Retro. Tell us real quick about Read Retro. Like, what what, what kind of magazine is it? What, is, what do you guys do? Yeah. Well, Retro Mag uh, Retro Magazine. Uh, we started. Uh, kind of had the idea for it. I guess it was back in, oh, uh, maybe August. I think August or September. Um, Mark Kaminsky, um, uh, kind of an acquaintance of mine, um, called and, and said, Hey, what if, he, he had forgot, he had heard that I wanted to do a digital magazine originally and kind of tie it into game gavel. And then he heard that and said, well, why don't you consider doing a print magazine? And I thought, well, hell I've never, I mean, print's kind of on the outs. I'd never even considered doing a print magazine. Right. And, um, he just also happens to work for a big media company and he's works on, he works on lots of print magazines and whatnot. And he's a big gamer and, and a big retro gamer. And he, he just said, well, no, I think we can do this. Um, and I'll, you know, do the layout and design work for you and, and, uh, everything else. So he contacted me kind of out of the blue with, with that bit of information. And I thought, well, hell, well, maybe we'll try a print magazine. Then I started contacting, you know, Jeremy Parrish and, uh, Kohler and a bunch of these other folks that I, I kind of know here and there. And, and we just put together, you know, this great list of, uh, writers and I also, you know, tried to go back and pick up some writers that I really enjoyed reading back in the 90s and the 80s and uh, kind of brought them on board. So we kind of amassed this, you know, really kind of who's who list of writers uh, over the past three decades. And, um, you know, it's been real interesting just kind of uh, working with these guys and these folks and, and, and kind of giving them free reign on kind of what they want to write about. Um, one of the cool things about Retro is we're sort of an independent you know, publication. We're not owned by any big, huge media companies or anything like that. We're certainly not big ourselves yet. And so it's just neat that we kind of have, I think, the the, the freedom to, to write, maybe uh, maybe a little more freedom to write what, what we want to write about versus kind of, you know, being under the guise of some big, huge, you know, corporate entity of some sort. So um, anyway, we, we're basically focused on retro gaming. Uh, we, I, we say it's the past, present, and future of retro because certainly there's a past in retro, um, but there's also a, a real great future in retro. I mean, there's tons of new games that uh, are being born every day that uh, are influenced by the classics from yesterday. And, um, you know, it's still kind of the, the retro or the classic gaming. It's kind of a genre if you think about it, uh, whether it's, a, you know, a fighter, a shmup, or a, a platformer, or an RPG. I mean... Uh, there's just tons of these games that are getting released on Android and, uh, you know, even on the PS4, like Resogun. I mean, it's one of the best games for the PS4, and it's an indie oh, developed... Oh, that game is fucking great. Yeah, I mean, it's an indie developed uh, game kind of uh, based off of a Defender. So, you know, Jeremy Parrish wrote about that in, in our premier issue, and it's just such a great game. And, and again, it's influenced by uh, by a classic arcade shooter um, from Eugene Jarvis. Of course, one of the best uh, probably game uh, Twitch game uh, makers from back in the day there ever was. So, um, so anyway, they, they've just still got a huge presence, you know, today. And, uh, a lot of these games aren't getting picked up. They kind of get lost in the crowd or the, the AAA games and everything else. And so we really want to be the voice of, of, you know, those style games and certainly the voice of indie developers, help them, uh, promote these games. Of course we had, you know, mighty number nine on the cover. Um, I guess you could still say they're an indie developer, but I guess, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, me and Corey were talking about that. Some like there's, there's sometimes there's a fine line between a yeah. indie independent developer. Like yeah, you're right. that guy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, sure you we'll don't work for Capcom, developer, but yeah. yeah, I guess you're indie. 
But Mighty Number no. Nine, I think that's a fantastic uh, first get, especially for the cover for this for this magazine because it's yeah. it's fucking me- it's fucking Mega Man. Like yeah. how retro <laughs> can't get more retro than that. Yeah, right, right. We had Rob Duanis uh, do our cover art. Uh, he's also doing our cover art for number two. Uh, we're going to have another nice cover. All our covers are going to kick ass. Um, you know, we really wanted to, uh, I th- you know, it all starts with the cover, I think, and a lot of the great old school magazines. I mean, if you look like a game fan and stuff, I don't know how old you guys are, but game fan, 72. you know, always. He's old. Huh? I'm 72. Old. You're what? <laughs> 72. Oh, wow. You don't sound that old. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, we've been gaming a long time. Yeah, I mean, since, uh, <laughs> what was the first console for the pullet? <laughs> Yeah, right. But uh, but you guys, you know what I'm talking about. It's just uh, classic games are still fun to play today. And that's why they're still so popular and people keep continuing to make them. So, you know, if we can help, you know, promote some of these great games. I mean, one of the sections we do in there, the Kickstarter corner, is just kind of, again, just kind of highlighting some successful Kickstarter campaigns that are retro, you know, retro focused and, uh, you know, try to, to spread the word as much as we can. But, yeah, it's pretty fun. Um you know, it's it's been a real learning experience for me not being in the publishing business, and all of a sudden, you know, in two months, going from a, a gleam in my eye to, to making a magazine is uh, is pretty incredible. But I got a great team. You know, we got Brandon Justice uh, as editorial director, and of course, Mark I mentioned is my uh, creative director, and uh, these two guys uh, really uh, are some of the best. I think I, I can't imagine working with either anybody else uh, in those positions. So. They're making it, um, you know, somewhat easy, and of course we got a great cast of writers, so um, you know we've got plenty of content coming in. Number two is going to be a great issue. I do want to say that uh, everything you said about Retro Magazine is definitely sounds much like what Corey's trying to do with Bias Bear. It does actually. I was thinking that I was talking, and I was like, hmm, we can work together. <laughs> yeah, we can do it. We can work together. <laughs> I think though, I think it, it does work out though because. In the gaming world, everyone, especially with Kickstarter and Indiegogo, it makes it easier for some of the developers to get out there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, it's just a great opportunity for, for people to crowdfund their games, not have to really sell off any, any of the ideas or, or bring in any uh, investors. They can kind of keep it all and own it all and and uh, gauge interest at the same time. You know, So, yeah, I mean, Kickstarter's been a phenomenal uh uh, motor uh, to or you know place to to kickstart. Yeah, because uh, I think know. that's what I think that's what people were lacking before. Because it's like games are coming out like crazy now. It's just you know every day there's just a new list of games that are coming out, and it, a lot of that has to do with Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Yeah, no, it's it's great. Um, it's given uh, you know it's bringing out a lot of games that that if it weren't for Kickstarter probably never would have come out. And uh, it's making a lot of people, you know, some decent money. It's giving people, you know, new livelihoods or ter- letting them turn their passions into something that they can make money at. And, um, I mean, it's a great uh, it's a great thing. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's weird, though. I mean, there's kind of lulls in good games. I've, I, we were trying to find, you know, some new games for the second issue. And I think we did get fill it up with some good stuff. But, you know, it kind of goes ebbs and flows. There's, like, really great games, and then, then it kind of dot, dips off, and there's nothing really that gets real big and popular. And then... Um, but uh, it's almost turning in kind of like the App Store. I mean, there's so many games not going through that. It's almost hard to find yeah. them. And I think some still are, you know, starting to fall through the cracks and not yeah. get funded. Um, so we try to look for those games. You know, we don't try to always, you know, glom onto a game and, and, and talk about one that's just, you know, already, you know, hugely popular. It's got thousands of backers. You know, if there's something that's retro and looks interesting, you know, and it's uh, struggling, you know, a lot of times we'll tweet about it or, you know, try to promote it, you know, through our social networks to try to spark it a little bit. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, be, yeah. Being an old school gamer yourself, you have to love the uh, the comeback that these old games are making. I mean, thanks to indie gaming, I think in particular, you see a lot of these uh, pixel art games, a lot of these mm-hmm. old like RPG games, like Final Fantasy three type games coming out. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you, you gotta love the the comeback of these games right now. Yeah, I love sprites, you know, and polygons and stuff in. I just think games today look so real. You know, I mean, a lot of them. It's almost like the. It's almost like they're not video games anymore to me. You know, it's like they they just look like too perfect and so real. So I I, I really like the old school look and and uh, you know pixel sprites. I mean, you can't beat that look and and um, yeah yeah. I mean, and you know they're they must be relatively easy to make these days because I mean there's so many people making them now and, and coming out on Android and. Uh, um, it's just there's so many games you still it's like you can't play them all right 
I mean, that oh, that yeah. said, are you kind of worried about you know oversaturation of the market in that sense? Or? Oh God, I mean, it's certainly. I think at this point, it is oversaturated. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to crash <laughs> or not crash. You know, having living lived through the first uh, crash, of course, I was very you know I was young at the time, so I didn't really understand it. You know, like I do now, but um, I don't know. I mean, um, I I can't. I mean, you just look in the app store. I mean, how many mil- you know millions of games? That, there's so many games. It is it is hard to. It's overwhelming, first of all. Yeah. You it's know, I mean, to find the gem and all of the. Because I mean, let's be honest, not all of them are good. So I mean, you have to find a good one. Then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the problem is most lot. of them. I don't think these days are, are that good. No. Uh, no, not on no, not on the app store. They, on, you, on they the, kind on of your used phone. to be, but then the floodgates opened, and then it's like anybody in there, you know, that thinks they can make a game, is trying to make a game, and and um. Well, a lot of these companies are just uh, they're just putting a new look on another game oh, yeah. that they've made and and releasing it, and people are are eating it up, and it's just yeah. like you go on you go on your Android store and you look up beta games and you get all of these games that are just obscure and and nobody's really playing but it's so much better than any of the other like top 100 games on on the app store or on google play yeah yeah it's just it's tough it's overwhelming and, and good stuff still gets lost in the mix too you know i mean if you happen to get you know if you're on ios and you get pulled up on touch arcade but i mean they Again, are just scraping the surface. They get all the real popular games, you know. They talk about it, and, but but yeah, there's there's just a lot of bad games, and and I mean, it's just kind of the way it is. It, it just takes you know, it, it takes a lot of time to research and find something that's good, and even and then there's all these new genres, you know, that are coming up. I mean, the endless runners <laughs> and stuff <laughs> like this, you know. It's like how many more endless runner games do we get? How many, how many more Angry Bird style, you know? I mean, uh, we, we say games, that many, physics we, games. I mean, good God. We say that, but uh, I do have the Sonic the Hedgehog Endless Runner game because I'm a Sonic the Hedgehog idiot. Yeah. So I've not seen that. Well, I mean, it's still Sonic, though. Is it good? Uh, it's, it's it's a fucking Endless Runner game, man. It's, yeah. it's I picked up Pitfall. You one. know, I got sucked into the, the, the you know, Activision re-released uh, or released, uh, you know, a Pitfall Endless Runner. Did they? And uh, it's right. actually pretty good. Got some uh, as far as Endless too. Runners go. Yeah, Pitfall Harry. Uh, it's pretty good. I remember they tried to reboot him on the uh, PlayStation 2, I believe, and uh, it was a extreme failure because it wasn't Pitfall at all. But uh, they tried though. Yeah, Pitfall. They keep trying to bring it back. I mean, there was Pitfall on the Jaguar and the Super NES and the Genesis, kind of the same one. It was, it was okay, you know. But uh, I tell you what, I've been really enjoying is, is the 3DS and the Nintendo eShop, man, coming up with some of the uh, Sega 3D classics. Uh, oh. Space Harrier, Super Hang On, all in 3D, kind of their first person uh, AM2 games. Man, they're they're freaking awesome. It took them long enough. Like if they started if they started that off sooner, I probably would have had 3DS by now. Yeah, it's great. I'd buy just for that, you know. I mean, if they bring if they bring Outrun and Power Drift and some of these back, I mean, holy shit, it, it's going to be awesome. Uh, they blasted out a whole bunch Streets of Rage. There's a 3D Sonic in there. I mean, it's it's the original okay, Sonic the Hedgehog, but in 3D. Okay, man. So it's still a 2D side scroller. You know, it's the side, regular old original Genesis version, but it's got depth now, and it's really cool. Does it it's make really it? <laughs> does it help the gameplay? Uh, it's it the same. It? Okay, it cool. It just looks cool. All right, cool, cool. As far as retro game goes for you, like, what, what were some of your favorites? Like, what do you, what do you? What's one game you probably have to go back and play like once a year because it was just it, it just holds that kind of value to you. Oh, well, I mean, my favorite game of all time is Kaboom on the Atari 2600. Oh, you took it back. I don't know what the fuck Kaboom is. Kaboom. Kaboom. Yeah. Kaboom. It was uh, the Mad Bomber dropping bombs and you use the paddle controller. I mean, it was a Twitch game like no other. I mean, young young gamers w- would get destroyed by a game like that today. <laughs> gamers today have it so easy. I mean, they got, don't you they? know, these hour-long tutorials, you know. It, you know, you play the first hour of a game it tells you everything you have to do i mean games didn't used to be like that man i mean they used to just be they throw you in the middle of it and i mean you know it was do or die there was no yeah. tutorials and stuff and kids mean, are spoiled these days. <laughs> like the kids these days i mean <laughs> that's one of them though but i go way back but um i don't know i mean i've got games kind of on every console i mean i've, I've had every, pretty much every console that's ever been i think um so it's hard to really i don't know it's hard to kind of pick out some um but uh, you know, but we're just actually getting ready to start a ColecoVision podcast. The, there's no ColecoVision podcast. What? I'm not sure how big the market is for it, but you know, 
we're gonna go out and uh, give it a shot. Fucking um, ass ColecoVision, man, hit it up. You, you might get a you, you get a, you get a bunch of old guys playing playing ColecoVision now. I mean, I, I I think I think I missed it. I, I started on, on the Atari Twenty Six. I want to say. Well, if you My started on that, it. the ColecoVision came after that. Way after yeah, that. but yeah, but we didn't we didn't even get it. We went for, straight from that to Nintendo. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's I had a Sega Master System when I was growing up. I kind of, I for some reason gravitated towards that. Uh, well, most people gravitated towards the NES, but I really liked the Master System. Uh, I, I can't remember. System. I can't remember what it was with the Sega, but it was like it was like a monthly subscription or something. It was before the internet, I think. So like you they used to get it in the mail. Some, yeah, they well they. Um, I know Dreamcast has something like that. Yeah, no, the Genesis, they, the, the early systems dabbled in, you know, dial-up modem, you know, and, and, and gameplay, but I don't know, I remember I don't reading remember. ads I about just... that stuff, but I don't know if it ever made it out, um, even no, Atari, it did. It even did. Atari I... had a, 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 a system that they were talking about that was going to try to hook up to the, to some, whatever it was before it was the internet, <laughs> up to the phone, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I mean it's it's bizarre to think how far back that all really goes. Um, but I just uh, remember, I just remember like playing it, and then the next month there would be a bunch of different games on it, and that was the coolest thing to yeah. me when I was like seven years old. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember the early days, of, you know, AOL and stuff when you could get on, or the uh, BBSs you can go on and get free games, and and uh, uh, yeah, those were good times back then. I, I do want to go back to something you mentioned, yeah. mentioned about how easy gamers have it now. I mean, uh, I often complain about games being way too easy. Even games that I really like, like a um, like Bioshock Infinite, I thought was uh, one of the one of the best games of last year. I mean, give you take three lives and no continues. Come on. Yeah, like it, <laughs> you know, I mean, what is this? You could be. I tell it, you what, that's the we had game, you know, in the arcades, you know, uh, Street Fighter. Some of the, you know, you could add more quarters and continue to play. I just think that it was great for the business of, of gaming. Don't get me wrong, but I just think at that point, you know, it just made started making things just too dang easy. You know? Yeah, you could, like you, I think you could get the metal slug if you just kept putting money and you could get to the end eventually. You know, even if you sucked at it. Um, you know, if you had enough quarters, you could get through. You could get through it. I think, like in Bioshock Infinite or any game like that, it's bullshit that your hardcore mode is to not have a, a path highlighting the next place. Oh, no, was it? <laughs> yeah, that's like one of the biggest differences in in 1999 mode was that you don't get the little thing that lights up when you don't know where you're supposed to go. I didn't even know that happens. <laughs> like. I don't remember that happening where like something lights up telling you where to go. Oh, it does. Dang, it's, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, I think it's up on your D-pad. Yeah, that, that's just ridiculous. I mean, like, what happened to like just kind of exploring? Could, could right. you imagine like if Zelda 2 had fucking a wave? Yeah, it would have been horrible. <laughs> like, like, it's automatically the worst game you ever played. Like, you need to be able to. Ex- like, because if you have a waypoint, in my opinion, like as a, as a developer, you're kind of selling yourself short because now I don't need to explore this million dollar map you made. I'm just gonna go across like the yellow brick road that you made for me and not look at nothing. But for more people, most people it's completion than it is actually experiencing the game. It's just, it's finishing the game, not like playing the game. No. People want people want a cinematic experience that they get to interact with. They don't really want to play a video game. After that, it's kind of like every boss is kind of like, if you shoot him enough, he'll he'll die. No, yeah. Got it. And it's just running and shooting, running and shooting, run then shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe a jump here and there. Yeah, maybe a jump. Which maybe one? a crouch, go prone <laughs> yeah. for a second, hide, peekaboo. Hey which, guys. Which when you think about it is you basically describe Mega Man, but what? <laughs> I mean, what do you think? Why do you think Mega Man is so great? And really, all that is is a is a shooter. You just run left to right shooting. Or why is that? Yeah, but so it's great? constant. It's constant. It's not like okay, I'm gonna walk around and I'm gonna talk to some people and then I'm gonna just walk around some more and then hey, there's a boss. It's like constant. Keep the like the action is always there. Mm-hmm. That that said, I mean, where do you, th- Mike? Where where do you? Th- 
where do you where would you like to see gaming go as far as like if you can have your if you can add your own old school improvements on games current and currently like where like where would you go like if you can improve Call of Duty with a old school tweak what would that old school tweak be? <laughs> oh jeez, I can't even imagine putting anything old school into Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> You know, God, you know, making everything uh, sprite based and, uh, you know, take it back to Doom or something. I mean, I'd say uh, off the top of my head, like, no health regen. Let's, let's try playing with that. Let's say with health packs or, yeah. or, or, or a medical class. Well, let's, let's, let's take away health regen. I think that killed the, uh, that killed a lot of competitive gaming for me. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean,. Or less, le- you know, seems like some games, I mean, they, I don't know, some games have too much health, some don't have enough health, you know, if you ask me. I mean, it's, it's kind of a fine line. Oh, um, I mean, Demon Souls, not enough health. That's, 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 what I, that's what I start to think about. Demon Souls, yeah. like the Dark Souls series, like those guys. Like, that's a game to me, I think, is very, very old school in a way. Like, you don't, there's no tutorial there. You don't know what the hell you're doing. They drop you in. Yeah. And it's just fucking every man for himself, and you just yeah. need to figure out what you need to do. And I think I, I think at times even that might be a little uh, too hardcore, because as much as I love the uh, the older games for not have tutorials, not walk hand, holding your hand going through levels. I mean, I think at so you do need to explain, I guess, basic principles, basic core mechanics before you head out and i think that's fine yeah yeah well i mean the games these days too i mean with all the button combinations and stuff i mean you got to have you know some basic uh, understanding of what you're doing uh i guess but i don't know i miss manuals you know i mean you, you very rarely get manuals anymore you know it's all in, uh, on screen <laughs> tutorials and stuff i mean nintendo used to have the best manuals and now you just get nothing um a friend of the show, Fallen Man, has said that a lot. Like, I want my manuals back. Yeah, and I, yeah. And I asked him, like, well, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm one kid who opened the case, flip, literally flipped through the manual and said, okay, I'm done. <laughs> and just went to play the game and tried to figure it out on that end. I, I, I never was a manual kid. I was, uh, I mean, I don't know if I didn't read every single manual either, but Nintendo's manuals were always, you know, really thick and nice and, you know, tons of character artwork in there and and, I appreciate that stuff. Corey, do you want the manuals to come back? Are you in? I think I I talked about that with with John, the the strategy guides and, or the manuals, I guess now. And um, I think it's, it's just more of a... And no offense to you, because I know you make a publication, but people mm. want to go online and find things. Mm. Like it's 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 actually like huge kudos to you that you have these people that are that are you know buying buying a publication like a a print. Oh yeah, you. I mean like we're that selling. Is, the, that's awesome. We sell right? digital too, but I mean the print's outselling the digital quite a bit. Partly because though, I mean we're still getting set up in a lot of the, the digital newsstands and stuff. So that may change when, you know, we're in the iTunes store and the Android store and Google Play and stuff. But that's all coming. Hopefully, maybe in the next 30 days. But uh, the, I mean the print magazine, if you just look at the Kickstarter campaign, outsold the uh, digital, uh, you know, hands down. I'd say 10 to one. Uh, print versus digital so i mean maybe that's our demographic you know a little bit older um although we've got tons of younger subscribers you know oh I, no i mean look at the cover alone for the first issue you don't want that digital no or, you, or, you want to keep that in the, yeah. in the plastic case oh in yeah the plastic bag. <laughs> yeah no it's beautiful i mean and every cover is going to be like i said it's going to be uh going to be like that you know somewhat we, we you know we're trying to kind of make it a resource uh something that you know you'll read and maybe keep in your collection versus just sort of reading it and tossing it we hope um, Which I mean, I, I don't feel like like gaming magazines, for example, Game Informer. Like mm-hmm. I would never keep a Game Informer. Oh uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't either. No but you know, there's twenty no years from now, they'd be fun to look through probably for you guys. So I mean, you got to think down the road a piece. I mean, God, if we would have kept all of our magazines, actually, I've got a pretty decent old school magazine collection. But you know, I've had to get them all after the fact, and you know, they're, some of them are getting pretty expensive now these days. But but yeah, I mean, it's just sort of a commodity, and, and um, but. You know, it's always good to pick. You know, keep a few if you, if there's really good stuff in there. Nice. And uh, being a a fan of gaming for so long, and now you're in the uh, basically the media part of media mm-hmm. aspect of it. Like, who? Like, is there anyone uh, that's that's really kind of uh, 
that you didn't starstruck by yet, like that you're trying to get to that you spoke to that you couldn't believe you actually got the chance to? My I don't know. To. Yeah, I mean that we've been, you know, I also do a podcast called Retro Gaming Roundup. Um, you can find that at retrogamingroundup.com. We've been doing that since uh, 2009, maybe February 2009, I think. And we do about a six to eight hour monthly show. And uh, Wait, it's all one, one show? show. Is it six it's all one hours? show. Yeah, it's all one oh, show. That's crazy. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. I mean, I you, you, ha- you have to master pause technology. That's what we tell people that complain about it. You know, when we first did it, everybody's like, "What? What are you doing?" And now, you know, people love that because I mean, if they're going, if they're working or mowing the lawn or shoveling or the, you know, they're on a long road trip. I mean, it, it's really nice. And and uh, we timestamp everything so you can start and stop it. You know. You know, you can come and go. You don't have to obviously sit and listen to the whole thing all at once, although a lot of people actually will. Um, but, yeah, we've got, you know, I don't know, four, four going on five years of shows, never missed a month, six to eight hours. And every show, we have a really nice interview in there. Um, we've interviewed, you know, Ted Dabney. He's the guy that invented uh, with Nolan, started Atari with Nolan Bushnell in 71 and invented the first coin-op game uh, that we talk about actually in our first issue here. Uh, computer space so we interviewed him and some of that interview got put into the computer space article this in the, the first issue of retro um but every issue i mean every you know if you're if you're if you guys or if your listeners are interested in kind of the history of gaming where it all started you know we interview a lot of the activision guys and intellivision guys and uh ColecoVision programmers and game designers and arcade programmers and designers and all sorts of cool people. And a lot of these, we, we get them in person uh, at the various classic gaming expos around the country. So we get to meet all these people that, you know, we grew up playing their games. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we're pretty much, I'm pretty much starstruck every time I see any of these guys. And now a lot of them are really good friends of ours. We've interviewed them many, many times. And, um, you know, we're pretty well connected with, with that that kind of the 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 kind of the game gaming gods and gurus of the industry you know from the 70s and 80s you know we're pretty much all really good friends with and and uh, talk to them you know actually quite often um so it's uh, it's pretty cool but next week we're actually uh, interviewing eugene jarvis who's somebody we've, we've never got on our show uh brand and i are going to see him at dice uh, as well as uh, a few other folks um and if you who did uh, you know mighty number no. nine is going to be there as a speaker so we're going to get him to sign some of our covers oh, beautiful. That, that's going to be pretty awesome you know we may uh, give a few of those away depending on you know if we how many we get signed um but uh, I, I, I like i like that I, I like that guy how uh how he basically left capcom because uh well part of the reason he left capcom is because they just wanted him to make mega man and mega man and mega man mm-hmm. and then uh, when he leaves he kind of just makes Mega Man again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm the not, situation is. I'm not there mad was. at that at all, because, I mean, Mega Man is great. Uh, my, my number nine looks fantastic, but, I mean, it's just kind of it's kind of funny to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there had to have been some interesting uh, goings-on with Capcom and him to to support that move. I mean, that that's pretty crazy. But, hey, you know, people that's what people want, you know. So he should be pretty damn interesting when it comes out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, who who was uh some of your gaming heroes growing up as far as uh as the industry goes? Because I, cause I, as a younger gamer, I guess I'm I'm looking more at like the Kojimas, the like the David Gaffey's, <laughs> like yeah, you know, like, right. who, who, who dude, yeah, ours are my 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 people are a little bit different, probably. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm more in the you know David Crane mode and. Uh, who did Pitfall and Pitfall Harry and, and, you know, the, basically created the first platformer, you know, um, Larry Kaplan again, did Kaboom, um, you know, Nolan Bushnell in general, just as, uh, you know, somebody that kind of pioneered the whole thing. Um, but as, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, my favorite game developers would, um, I don't know. It, it sounds stupid, but I mean, it would go back to all the Atari guys, Bob Plero and, and all the rest of the Activision guys, Derek, Gary Kitchen, Dan oh, Kitchen. That's not stupid you know. at all, man. I mean, yeah. I mean, these guys, you know, I mean, they, they were making games when, when there were no games, they were, you know, creating genres that, that are still exist, that still exist today. I mean, it literally all started with these guys and they had to have these ideas for the first time. Um, I mean, you see some new ideas coming up, you know, and some cool stuff happening and, and, uh, but I mean, you know, dual stick shooters, I mean, you know, for geometry wars where, I mean, you know, that was Robotron. I mean, all these games existed kind of back then and, and now people are just kind of, uh, revamping them and, and, you know, modernizing them, which is kind of neat. Um, but again, a lot of the core game, you know, uh, mechanics and stuff, you know, I grew up when those were all 
invented. It's bizarre. <laughs> you know, I'm not even that old. I mean, I'm 44, but, um, you know, it's like it was really cool to grow up at that time when, when all of this stuff was new. Um, I mean, the video game magazines like Electronic Games back then, uh, there was articles in there talking about, you know, if, if this was going to be a fad. You know, so it's it's really interesting. If you get a chance, you know, go uh, you know find some old video game magazines, and and they're, they're a blast to read these days. Yeah, uh, a you billion can literally see ad. kind of how everything developed and 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 everything else. I mean, it, it, it's really interesting. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, so so Mike, where, where are we now? I mean, you can't we can't be stuck playing retro games forever. I mean, we got we got to we got to expand. Play some of this new ridiculous stuff. I mean, what, what's yeah. what's some of the newer stuff that that's really caught your eye? Um, well, I don't know. Again, it'd be, it sounds stupid, but I'm a huge Animal Crossing fan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really? That's, oh yeah, yeah. Really Animal Crossing on GameCube yeah. or the? Uh, oh yeah, I mean, it, the addiction started there and then it's continued to the 3DS. I mean, it's the first thing I pick up in the morning, the last thing I put down at night. You know. Animal Crossing, huh? I, I would have never guessed it, man. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think life's just so busy and chaotic. It's just nice to check out for an hour or two a day and and play someone else's life. Play something. Or something. Yeah, run through. Uh, yeah. Um, oh my God. Um, I've got a PS3. I bought it when Little Big Planet came out. Great game. I basically, Fantastic. bought it for that. Um, haven't turned it on much uh, since. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I did get the new Doom, and then of course the arcade compilations. I'll get that stuff and play. Um, had a Wii for a while till it crapped out, and wouldn't eject discs anymore, or wouldn't wouldn't take discs anymore, and send it to somebody who modded it, and wow, got rid of that. I'm surprised uh, your Wii broke before your PlayStation Three. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, it got a lot more playtime than my PlayStation Three did. Hey, do you mind? Uh talking for about 45 minutes about how underrated the Dreamcast is. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, like, that's fucking... hugely. I mean, that was the last system that hit any soul. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was really when that when that when that was over. I mean, that was really the last I mean, kind of the last classic system, I think. Um, I mean, just uh, I mean, it had games, you know, any kind of games that, that you would want it. I mean, I love the, the original PlayStation. So, I mean, that <clears throat> that was probably, I mean, as far as like kind of modern day gaming, that was probably my biggest, you know, I, I you know, couldn't get enough PlayStation. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, I mean, the Dreamcast just, uh, you know, it was great. I still collect for it, you know, today I can find a lot of that stuff at the swap meets and most of the games you can pick up pretty cheap, although there's, there's a few that are expensive. But uh, I tell you, the other underrated system is the Saturn, man. Um, I was a real late bloomer to the Saturn. Um, but found one at a garage sale just not too far from my house, maybe three year, three four years ago, and um, and then at the swap meets I found just oh my god I, I found a score I mean it was all the games were like five bucks and they were brand new I mean I picked up Panzer Dragon Saga that uh, game's a, a classic I mean there was like you know hundred two hundred dollar games I picked up for five bucks uh, they had a lot of the import games and the import adapter and that's where I really started enjoying it and going and you know picking up a lot of the um, you know Japanese uh, shooters and whatnot that we couldn't get over here with that adapter I mean the Saturn you know over there um, just had some tremendous games over here yeah not so much um, so that's a really you know I think a really cool underrated system to collect for these days if you can get, um, get the SD card or the SD key or the SD card whatever it was the I think it was, I think they call it the SD key and it was just a cartridge that would plug into the cartridge slot of the Saturn, and then you could play import discs. So that was, yeah. But goddamn, there's so many games to play these days. All the old games you you didn't play when you were growing up that you can go on and get. And um, I mean, there's still so many games that I didn't play growing up that I still want to play. That uh, you know, it's almost hard to, to I, you know, I don't, I didn't pick up uh, an Xbox One or PS4 yet. I, I'm trying to get Corey to play these old games with me, but she refuses. When did I refuse? You I never refuse. refuse. Like, I you, never you refuse. Won't, you won't play any Legend uh, Secret of Mana with me, co-op. You You've refuse. never asked me. That's bullshit. <laughs> that's All right. That's a game that's I've just started truth. playing through uh, um, on uh, emulation, unfortunately. but That's the only way to play it, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that game is that's one of the best unknown RPGs you're going to play. Like that's 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 a great uh that's so, that's one of the uh first action RPGs I played and that that I really won my heart over. Uh Corey we, we haven't played any Streets of Rage ever. No, T no TMNT in time. 
You have never asked That's me. That's bullshit. You have never bullshit. asked me. It's bullshit. I beg you on snaps all the time. I used to actually streets of streets. Of, was it streets of rage that I used to play? I, I don't know. I just. There. I I just remember because like I didn't know my first console until I was like seventeen. So I always like every time because Filipinos get together a lot and all my other friends had consoles. So you know, mommy, I want to go over to a friend's house and then I'd play these games at their house. So I don't know. I think there, I think so because does the chick do like a like a cartwheel and a blade comes out of her foot? <laughs> <laughs> um. I want to say yes, but that's also. I think you're combining the move of the girl and like the black kid on rollerblades, because he does like some hip hop spinning kick thing. No, it's just a cartwheel. Yeah, it's just a familiar. cartwheel. It's just okay. a cartwheel. She just does a cartwheel and like the, a blade comes out of her yeah. of her foot when she does it. I, f- I forgot her name. I, n- I know it's Axel, because that's the only person I played as. That's the main guy. And then, like, yeah, the big guy and the girl and, like, the, the, the little black kid. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> he was a little black kid. He was smaller. Uh, African American like myself and a child. Like, I don't, I don't know why he was, like, fighting in the streets with these grown ass people. But, I mean, I'll, back then, beat him up didn't need a story. I don't think beat him ever needed a story, really. Uh, that's nice that's nice good for it good for him uh uh, mike do me a favor and um i need i need you for 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 co-host of the show l snaps if we're talking about old games he he, he's going to he's going to want to hear about echo the dolphin did you play echo the dolphin dude i could not i never got into that game (laughs) thank you i just thank you it just i don't know what it was (laughs) It's, it's not about, that I don't like dolphin games because I loved Fathom on the Atari 2600, but Echo I just can never get into it. Well, it makes no fucking sense. You're a dolphin saving the world, like. Yeah, it, it was Echo, a bit of a stretch. It, everything about it was fucking ludicrous. I yeah, mean, I don't like it. It was one. Uh, I mean, a lot of people did. You know, I mean, I think it was. Uh, uh, you know, as it as a dolphin, as far as dolphin games go, I think <laughs> it's pretty good. I mean, as games in a dolphin genre. I yeah, mean, the, yeah, the, I think it was the best one, as, as a matter of fact. The, the, the huge dolphin genre of video games. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to yeah. say, I don't think there's a lot of market for for dolphin. Dolphin. No, they uh, did a Kickstarter heroes. to bring it back, or the the same people that made that game came back to d- design another game. It was called like Endless Ocean or something like uh, last year sometime. I but saw it, that. I, it, yeah, they didn't make it. I don't think. Really? A game about a magic dolphin didn't make it? Yeah, I don't think it made it. <laughs> That's surprising. So, uh, Mike, read Retro, uh, Retro Magazine. Uh, where, what can we expect out of the, out of the, uh, the next issue? We're going to be talking about uh, River City Ransom, you know, the reboot of that. And uh, other than that, I can't really tell you much. Um, the, the articles will all come in. I've honestly, uh, till they reach uh, kind of uh, the second copy level, I don't even go in and read everything because I kind of want to be surprised myself. Nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, I kind I read it myself. You know, I want to, uh, and so I'll, I get an idea of kind of what the, what you know all the columnists are writing about, and and then um, you know Brandon pretty much uh, you know works uh, with everything, gets it all put together, and. I'll start seeing it when the when the layout and the design of the pages start coming together, you know, uh, so they're going to look like they're going to look, you know, when they're in the magazine. Um, so I kind of just usually wait till that, and we're about a week away from kind of getting all that done and submitting it. Uh, it should get to the printers uh, hopefully by the mail you know, sometime mid February. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Um, so, so Mike, before I let you get out of here, I'm going I'm to run you through a a test of questions here. All right. so it's going. It's going. It's going to test your uh, your lover, your your heart of the games here. Oh, I hope that's old school questions. Oh, they are. It's going to be. <laughs> it's, going, it's going to be pretty easy. You're going. You're going to go through best game for each, your favorite game for each system. Uh, I can try to favorite, do that. Favorite for Coleco. Favorite game for Coleco. Coleco is uh, Pepper Two. Pepper Two. Do you know P-E-P- what that is? P E P P E R. P E P P E R Two. Google it. I don't know if you're going to like it. Pepper 2 is one you, I think you had to grow up with. You know, I don't know if it held up well, but cool kind of take on a maze game. I get pictures of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> there we yeah, go. No. Pepper 2. <laughs> yeah. Pepper 2. Yep. 
great game. That, that, that looks like something. And actually, it, like I think something. the only place you could play that game, uh, it, there was an arcade, but it's very obscure. It's really hard to find. I've seen it at a couple auctions. Uh, actually, only once. Pretty obscure arcade game. Um, but uh, it was only, I think the only home console you can play it on is the ColecoVision. I, don't, I have no idea why it's called Pepper 2. <laughs> did you, it, did it you play Pepper It does not involve 1? any peppers. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they called it that to this day. Did you play Pepper 1? No, there wasn't one. That's a, that's another mystery. <laughs> that's another seriously. That's another mystery. All right, Pe- Pepper Two. All right, Pete, your favorite game. This I wouldn't be able to answer this question. P- favorite game of PS Two. Um. Well, I don't know about all time. I, well, I don't know. I I love Shadow of the Colossus. Um, oh yeah, that's beautiful. Radius Five is a great shooter. I don't know if I could just name one. Um. Maximo, um, Max- Story. I love that game. Maximo, we play. Uh, that's that's one of the games we we, we uh, tried to play again recently, and yeah. we realized you can't uh, control the camera, and that pissed me the hell off. It's, yeah. So uh, I don't know how I played through that when I was younger, because now it just, it just annoys the hell out of me. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's so many great games on the PS2. Well, was... I honestly, I'm just kind of getting back into it. I had it for a very short time and then got an Xbox, kind of when Halo came out and actually did uh, play a lot of Halo online. Uh, just Halo 1. I, I got real burned out on it after that. Um, but um, Maximo for... was a... Uh, was, wasn't that basically the sequel to a Ghost and Goblins? Yeah, yeah. It was written by David Siller, who actually uh, is, uh, was the original Sushi X in the early EGM days. Um, but again, it might be before your time a little bit, but, um, he's also, uh, set to write for the magazine too. Nice. Beautiful. If we can get him. Yeah. We, we've, we've kind of, we didn't get him in the first issue and, um, he's, uh, uh we're going to still try to get him to write some stuff, but. All right. Next up, Nintendo 64. Another, another oh tough, God. And, and I have one. to go with Star Fox uh, on the N64. Star Fox over GoldenEye. Oh Yeah. Yeah, Goldeneye's great. Don't get me wrong, but um, I love on, I actually love on rail shooters, and, and Star Fox is one of the best. I think. Um, Do a barrel roll. It was its absolute best uh, on the N sixty four. So I love Super Mario three D. Um, Super Mario, you know. Um, yeah, the Mario, the even Zelda. Yeah, they have some, yeah, some oh, good yeah. ones on that one. Good ones on that system. The last great Nintendo console for me. I mean, the N64 is kind of like the Dreamcast. It's a lot of shit these days. But I tell you what, it was a hell of a great console. And it's a fun one to collect for, and the games are still pretty decent. Uh, oh, fuck, this is a tough one. The best NES game. Oh, dear God. That one. No, I, I, I'd have an easier time with PlayStation 2. I, I wouldn't say it's best. I would just say my favorite, favorite, your favorite right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. Oh, it's going to just sound stupid as all shit. I, <laughs> I love this. This was also on the Genesis, but I played it a lot on the SNES. Um, the is now the enemy has well, I mean, Super Mario World, I think, is an I, I loved. I love Donkey Kong Country. I think I got to go with the original Donkey, just the Donkey Kong Country. The first one has got to be my one. favorite game. One of the yeah. best soundtracks in history of video games. Yeah, I absolutely love that game. But um, I also love Krusty's Funhouse. Krusty's Funhouse. And Super Off-Road. Uh, it's a great uh, arcade conversion of that game. And Mr. Do uh, was available on there, too, which is a pretty much a uh, really super hard arcade game to find at home on any home consoles uh, at that time. Um, but, yeah, Donkey Kong Country for me would be number one on there. Not bad, not bad. I think I think I'd. Uh... It was so cool when it came out. I mean, nothing ever. I mean, rare. I mean, when that came out, it did blew everything away. If you ask me, <sighs> graphically, that thing was a masterpiece of the day of the day. I mean, I, I will say I loved Rare so much. I I wish they would. I really wish they would make a comeback, like a yeah. strong comeback, because they yeah. made some of the best games I ever played in my in my yep. life. Yeah. In television. Ah, in television. What would be my favorite game on in television? Corey, feel free to jump in. Your favorite game on television. I know you had one. Yeah, I mean, 
Astro Smash is kind of the given. I mean, everybody loved Astro Smash. Um, but I don't know. I, there was a game that was kind of a Donkey Kong takeoff called Beauty and the Beast that uh, I really liked. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast on television. Yeah. You'll have to check it out. I check like that out, yeah. Donkey, similar to Donkey Kong. Quite a bit different, but, but similar. Atari Jaguar. Uh, gotta go with Tempest 2000. I never Brilliant. had, I never had the Jaguar. Yeah, well, it's it's it. Get it just for Tempest 2000, and you'd, you'd be happy. And lastly, the Turbo Graphics. Uh, have to be Devil's Crush, uh, the pinball. I never got pinball games on consoles. Have you ever played Devil's Crush? Or I have not. Crush? Well, that's why. <laughs> that, that, that's it. That's the if reason. you played it, yeah. I mean, Devil's Crush was uh, was brilliant. Yeah, it's like a demonic, uh, you know, pinball table. You know what? That's a lie. I did really like Sonic Spinball. Mm-hmm. But I want to say it's just because I'm a Sonic fanboy. Yeah, this looks like this is this. Yes, yeah, this, this is like one of those old video games. Just like crazy it's great. Shit I mean, it's happening. almost like it's a shooter almost. You know, I mean, except you got a pinball. Um, plus, there's tons of bonus areas that you know change and and. Uh, it's uh, it's it's an inter- it's an interesting game. Like like Doom Spinball, I like it. Well, Mike, appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, well, I appreciate you having me on. I mean, lo- love talking about the old school games, man. Uh, like again, like being a new school gamer, like I grew up on the Nintendo and uh, Atari, so like I love my old school stuff and. I wish they make more of it, and that's why I like the uh, the indie the indie stuff and your magazine is promoting that good stuff. So appreciate you coming on. Where can we find all the information you needed about uh, Retro Magazine? Well, uh, you can go to readretro.com. Readretro.com. It should be up by Monday. You heard you heard him. Yep. You heard. If it's not up, they'll be mad at us. Yep. Don't be mad. Uh, yell at him because he lied to you again. It's gonna be a great <laughs> retro site. So everybody bookmark it. Yep. Mike, uh, heads up, has a uh, reputation for being late. Why not? I do. I do. I do. <laughs> uh, from Mike, a retro, Corey, buys bear. This is Basher. Over and out. Good day, sirs.